If you turn to your Bibles in the book of Luke to chapter 8, I want to talk about Jesus still in the storm to, to this morning. But um, I, I had intended to, to speak about something else. But um, that's not going to be the case today. So we're going to talk about Jesus still in the storm. And Pastor made reference to the fact that we had a chance to, to go to Mille Lacs and to be um, in one another's company. That was exciting. And uh, I enjoyed it very much. I'm glad we went. And it was um, worth it well worth the time spent. And uh, just thank God for what he's doing in, in our relationship, Amen. the three of us. I, I feel like I have, I already have two brothers, but I think I have two more. I know I do. I don't think I do, I know I do. But uh, I, God is, is definitely teaching me about how iron sharpens iron. Luke chapter 8, verses 22 to 25. It says, Now on one of those days, Jesus and his disciples got into a boat, and he said to them, Yeah, would you stand for the reading of the word? His disciples got into a boat, and he said to them, let us go over to the other side of the lake. So they launched out. But as they were sailing along, he fell asleep and a fierce gale of wind descended on the lake. And they began to be swamped and to be in danger. They came to Jesus and they woke him up saying, Master, we are perishing. And he got up, and he rebuked the wind and the surging waves, and they stopped, and it became calm. And then verse 25 says, and he said to them, where is your faith? They were fearful and amazed, saying to one another, who then is this that he commands even the winds and the water, and they obey him. You may be seated. I was moved to look at this passage and to talk to you about it today because these are days where there's storms raging, and we don't even know where they're coming from. Sometimes you can turn the news on, and the weatherman can tell you there's a storm coming, and you get a chance to prepare for that for those. You get a chance to to go around the house and to put things in preparation for the storm that's coming. You get a chance to lock some doors and to lock some things down outside and inside because there's a storm brewing and you can see it a ways off. But lately, storms have been coming in such a, 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 a way that we don't get a chance to get prepared. We just have to react. And so we are... Um, living in a day now where it feels like, Lord, what is going on? There's, there's a lot of heat to deal with and not a lot of time to, to get ready for it. I don't know about you, but 
That's just been how I've been feeling lately. Amen? Amen. It's been a lot of heat to deal with and not, and not, not a lot of time to get prepared for that. This thing with, um, with my heart has been a, 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 um, one of those kinds of storms. I, it's something that I um, found out was, was something that I had all my life. But all my life, I never felt anything. I never had any ill effects. I never went through much um, of being um, sidelined or having to deal with that. And so it's interesting how these days, it's, it's an everyday occurrence that something is not right all the way because of that. And so I think that the, you know, that the Lord is teaching me some things about that, but you know, the other thing is that he's reminded me that I need him. Yes. You know, I need him every day, all the time. And sometimes, you know, in your youth, you can take your health and you can take the goodness of God for granted mm -hmm. because everything is just great. The the flowers on the bloom and the, your toast is buttered and nobody's bothering you. Everything is great. Life is good. But how many of y'all know when the storms are brewing, when we, go through high, when we go through high water, then we find out what we're made of. We find out who God is and we find out how much we really do need him. And the tests that we have can be the kind of test that um, that cause us to to um, really be um, aware that it's going to take God to deal with the test that we go through. So I'm, I'm talking about living a life with trials in it. Has anybody lived a life that had some trials in it? Yes. Does anybody know what a trial is? I'm not talking about court. Okay, I'm talking about going through some high water and going through some, some difficulty and being challenged to the point where you have to make a decision about whether you're really ready to deal with what you got to deal with. You get to find out by going through some of these challenges who you really are and what you really have to work with. And so as these, as these disciples were in this boat and they're, um, they're going to the other side of the lake, I can um, witness to you about the fact that I have been on that lake. And that lake is not a, a, is not a friendly lake. It can be very trying. The weather comes up very fast and the um, challenges that um, it can present to a boat, the size of the boat that they were in can be really really um, scary. And so, um, thinking about um, what they were dealing with at that time, them coming, to, them coming around Jesus and asking the question, Master, do you care if we drown is a real, I think, I think that's a real good question for, the, for them to ask because I think the water would have been churning like, um, like you wouldn't believe. And so as this water is turning and they're asking the question, Jesus is asleep, of course, and he wakes up. And what does he do? He speaks to the storm. And I don't know about you, but I need Jesus every day to speak to storms that are going on in my life and in my surroundings. Um, how does... Um, how does that look when Jesus speaks to a storm? I think one of the things that he does that only he can do is to look right at it and say the words, peace, be still. And you know what? He doesn't have to say a whole lot of stuff. He doesn't have to yell at it. He doesn't have to get all bent out of shape. He doesn't have to jump up and down. He just spoke to that thing. 
and did obey them. And as I if and as I read this text, what it says to me is I need to stick close enough to Jesus so that when he speaks, he can he can he can let some of that same stuff that he spoke at the time he was with the disciples in, in the boat with them. That same voice that he spoke then can echo in my situation now. Amen? So when we look at this situation, don't be don't be caught up in the fact that that's that that, that happened way back then, and 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 uh, this and today is a different day, and now is a different time. We're dealing with issues and, and concerns that we need Jesus to, to 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 wake up in the boat that we're in with us and speak to the storms that are going on in our lives. Yes. And so when He speaks to those storms. We need to also expect that they're going to obey him as well. I need to be close enough that I can call on him and he can speak to the storm. I need to invite him into situations that are going on in my life that he can speak to the storm. Sometimes we get busy and we get um, caught up with our friends and with other things. And we forget to invite him to get up and to speak to the storms that are going on in our lives. And sometimes the, the not speaking, sometimes forgetting to ask him to speak, rather, is costly. Mm -hmm. It hurts us. It hurts our situation. It hurts those around us because if we don't have him to speak to the storm, we don't have enough in us to do that. I don't. I can't speak to a storm and it obeys me, but I, <laughs> but I know someone who does. And so I, 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 I offer that to you today because I know we're hurting. I know we're being tried. I know we're being overwhelmed with things and with people and with stuff. And I know that... Um, God is not um, comfortable watching us suffer. I've read the Bible enough to know that his heart goes out to us when we're going through trial and we're going through struggles and when we're going through that, that, all of that stuff and it's without him. He cares about that. And why does he care about that? Because he cares about you. He cares about everybody that's sitting out there where I'm looking right now. Cares about your situation. Cares about all that you're going through. Cares about what you have and what you don't have. Cares about dealing with, with your situation to the extent that um, he's willing to take time out of what he's doing to enter into your thing, into your stuff. Pastor always reminds us that God is a great big old God. But he's got time for all of us. Amen. Amen. He's got time for you. Can you, can you imagine a God over, that's bigger and that is, is greater than the universe, but he cares about you and the situations that you're facing? He cares about you and the, and, the, and the trials and the struggles that you're going through. Cares about you enough to enter into your situation, to speak to your storm. Yeah. Question that, that we all have to answer though is, am I willing to trust him enough to let him do that? Do I have, do I have enough trust that I can be, be willing to invite him into my stuff, into my storm, into my surroundings? I hear people sometimes saying, I, you know, I need to get I need to I need to get ready and then I can invite God in. I need to get my life together and then I can invite God in and He can take care of me. Well, if He's the God of the impossible, huh? If He's the God of the impossible, I think He can deal with all our stuff. Well. Because I got some, I don't know about you, but I got some impossible stuff. 
that's going on in my life. Well, I got some. I, I'm impossible. <laughs> and so, if, if that's the case, the God of the impossible can be trusted with our stuff. He can be trusted enough to, to invite him in and say, Lord, I, I messed this up. I didn't, I didn't mean to mess it up. Or maybe I did, but maybe I didn't. I don't know. But you need to help me. Yeah. And sometimes that's the best prayer to pray. Lord, help me. Yeah. You don't have to be a, a great theologian to pray that prayer. All you got to do is go to him and say, Lord, I need you. Help me. And whatever it is, guess what? He'll wake up and he'll come stand by you and speak to the storm that's going on in your life. I love that about him. That he'll wake up and come stand by us and speak to the storm that's going on in our lives. What kind of storms do you have? Financial? Emotional? Spiritual? How about those relationships? Storms. Complicated stuff. Stuff that Sometimes causes us to cry at night. Causes us to stay up when everybody else is asleep. Causes us to have, have ulcers. And have to be all bollocked up without answers and without knowing what to do and when to do it. We know we need to do something, but we don't know what to do. We know we need to give it to somebody, but maybe sometimes we don't know who to give it to. We know we need to talk to somebody, but sometimes we're talking to the wrong one. And so God is waiting and wondering when we're going to invite him to wake up and to come stand beside us and speak to the storms that are going on in our lives. Well, I thank you for, for letting me talk about the, the Jesus who is in this book. <coughs> Talking about the Jesus who <coughs> was sent by God the Father to, to be uh, somebody who had who was God but had skin on at the same time. Yes. And who moved amongst the people and who understood their situations and who was able to, to counsel them and heal them and, and do all of the things that were needed because he was God, but he was also a man at the same time. And we get to, get to see him in this book, but we also can, can um, come to know him for ourselves. He's still ready, willing, and able to be this same Jesus who was in the book. But he wants to do it now in 2019 yes. in your life, in your home, yes. in your work, wherever you are. Yes. And so we talk about this man, Jesus, sometimes like he is a, is a Bible character. But he is very much real. He's very much real. And so we dare not let him be just a Bible character. He's, Jesus is God and he's man and he's ready, willing, and able to come beside us and to speak to our storm. He's ready to come beside us and be in relationship with us. He doesn't care about religion. We talk, you know, we, we might talk, you know, when you come to church, sometimes we talk about being religious. Jesus doesn't care about that. He cares more about being in relationship. He wants, to, he wants to call you a friend. He wants to be a brother to you. He wants to love on you. How many of y'all need some love in your life? I, I, I don't think we can have too much love. 
Is anybody get, got too much love? I, I need to meet you. If somebody is in here with, that's had too much, I think we all can use some. And we all can benefit from the love of God. Because he's able to see the flaws and the, and the mistakes that we have and love us anyway. Amen? Amen. It's called grace. grace. Unmerited favors. I don't deserve it. But he gives it to me. He pours it out on me. He lays it, at, he lays it on me because he loves me that much. And there's nothing I can do about it. I can't change it. How many of y'all know that? You can't stop Jesus from loving you. John 3.16 says, He loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish, should not perish, but have eternal life. That means even after I leave this place, even after, even after I'm done here, I get to go home and be with him forever. And, and we get to talk about everything and laugh and joke and slap each other on the back. Fellowship in heaven. That's something to be something to be looked forward to. Heaven all day, every day. Well, I I'm gonna stop now because I'm I think I said enough, but I, I want you to just think about what I said. I think I think you know yourself enough to know what you're facing today and what you're facing as you get ready to step into this week. And so as you get ready to go into this week, I pray that you go in the knowledge that Jesus is going with you if you want him to. Before you leave here, if you haven't made him your choice yet and found him to be your savior yet, I invite you to invite him to be that for you today. Don't leave without making that choice, without inviting him to be your Lord and Savior. Because he wants to have a relationship that, that dovetails and that hinges on that choice you made or you, you're going to make. And so there's somebody that will stand here and pray with you and, and help you um, navigate all of that and make that happen in your life. But also I want you just to be mindful of the fact that as you go into this week, he wants to go in, into the week and, and deal with whatever you're facing as you go into the week. He doesn't want you to enter into this week coming up by yourself. And doesn't want you to enter into this week being overwhelmed. So if there's any chance of that happening for you collectively or individually, Please let us let us pray with you before you leave and, and make sure that, that that's been dealt with thoroughly before you leave. I want you to have peace in your life and in your heart. And tonight as you lay down, I want you to be, be peaceful in your sleeping. If you've been, been uh, struggling with getting some good rest and, and, and being at peace, I want you to, to have that before you leave today. Amen? Amen? God bless you. Amen. Pastors, if you want to come up and you can have a prayer dismissed.